Convening has arrived and the Senate will now come to order. I'd like to recognize my good friend, the distinguished senator from the 53rd, Almost Tennessee. Almost Tennessee. What's the song? West Virginia? No, I'm sorry. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. It's a beautiful day here. Apparently, there are a lot on vacation. I don't see many folks here except the strong working people over in that corner. And, uh, in fact, uh, the senator from Dalton told me this is his favorite day. It's National Gumdrop Day. So just ask him for some gumdrops. He's got them. And our good friend from the uh, third, it's her birthday. I don't know what you want to do about that, but it is her birthday today. So, Mr. Chairman, I mean, Mr. President, I wish I had more to say, but I just don't today. I'm not inspired yet, but I will be under your leadership and tutelage of this great body and having these two uh, friends of mine just look at me like, what the heck am I doing? The journal's been add, read and found to be to that list. <laughs> the journal's been read and found to be correct. I'm just talking. I'll, I'll be quiet now. Answers to prayer. Is there objection to dispensing with the reading of the journal? The chair hears none, and the reading of the journal is dispensed with. Is there objection to the confirmation of the journal? The chair hears none, and the journal is confirmed. All senators who have bills or resolutions, please bring them up to the secretary's desk at this time. And Mr. Secretary, can we proceed with first reading of Senate bills and resolutions, please? Senate Bill 510 by Senators Ginn of the 47th and others, a bill to be entitled an act to amend code section 45524 of the OCGA relating to instruction permits, graduated licensing. Public licensing. safety. Senate Bill 511 by Senators Anderson of the 24th and others, a bill to be entitled an act to amend code section 485311 of the OCGA relating to creation of county boards of equalization duties. Finance. Senate Bill 512 by Senator Payne of the 54th and others, a bill to be entitled an act to amend part one of article two of chapter 12 of title 16 of the OCGA relating to gambling, so as to revise provisions related to dog fighting to prohibit animal fighting. Agriculture and consumer affairs. Senate Bill 513 by Senator's parent of the 42nd and others, a bill to be entitled an act to amend chapter two of title 40 of the OCGA relating to registration and licensing of motor vehicles, so as to remove a fee for the operation of alternative fueled vehicles to and make transportation. Senate Bill 514 by Senators Dixon of the 45th and others, a bill to be entitled an act to amend Chapter 2 of Title 20 of the OCGA relating to elementary and secondary education so as to provide that no local board of education, local education and youth. Senate Bill 515 by Senators Merritt of the 9th and others, a bill to be entitled an act to amend Article 1 of Chapter 11 of Title 31 of the OCGA relating to general provisions rel relative to elementary health and human services. Senate Bill 516 by Senators Robertson of the 29th and others, a bill to be entitled an act to amend Article 1 of Article Part 1 of Article 2 of Chapter 8 of Title 12 of the OCGA relating to general provisions of solid waste management so as to require the environmental protection Finance. Division. Senate Resolution 499 by Senators Beach of the 21st and others, a resolution dedicating the technology corridor and for other purposes. Transportation. Senate Resolution 503 by Senators Dugan of the 30th and others, a resolution recognizing Representative Bill Hembry and dedicating a bridge in his honor and for other purposes. Transportation. Senate Resolution 504 by Senators Mullis of the 53rd and others, a resolution recognizing the significant role that the Native American tribes have played in Georgia and dedicating a tree on the state capitol grounds in their honor and for their purposes. Rules. That completes the order, Mr. President. First reading in reference of House bills and resolutions, please. House Bill 963 by Representatives Parrish of the 158th and others, a bill to be entitled an act to amend Chapter 13 of Title 16 of the OCGA relating to controlled substances so as to change certain provisions. Public safety. House Bill 1028 by Representatives Earhart of the 36th and others, a bill to be entitled an act to amend an act providing for the election of members of a Board of Education of Cobb County approved March. Logo. House Bill 1089 by Representative Smith of the 133rd and others, a bill to be entitled an act to amend Article 2 of Chapter 9 of Title 48 of the OCGA relating to road tax on motor carriers so as to increase the penalty. Transportation. House Bill 1134 by Representatives Abstration of the 104th and others, a bill to be entitled an act to amend Code Section 1615.4 of the OCGA relating to participation in criminal gang activity prohibited. Judiciary. So House Bill 1154 by Representatives Carson of the 46th and others, a bill to be entitled an act to amend an act creating the Board of Commissioners of Cobb County approved June 19, 1964 as amended particularly by an act approved. Slogo. House Bill 1250 by Representative Drenner of the 85th, a bill to be entitled an act to amend an act establishing the form of government of DeKalb County and fixing the powers and duties of the officers. Slogo. House Bill 1299 by Representative Leverett of the 33rd, a bill to be entitled an act to provide that the judge of the probate court of Elbert County shall also serve as the chief magistrate judge of the Slogo. 
House Bill 1311 by Representative Burchett of the 176, a bill to be entitled an act to authorize the assessment and collection of technology fee by the probate court of Lanier County. Slow go. House Bill 1312 by Representative Houston of the 170th, a bill to be entitled an act to amend an act creating the Board of Education of Berrien County, approved April 5th, 1971. Slow go. House Bill 1313 by Representative Burchett of the 176, a bill to be entitled an act to amend an act creating the Office of Commissioner of Roads and Revenues in the County of Atkinson. Slow go. House Bill 1314 by Representative Camp of the 131st, a bill to be entitled an act to amend an act to provide for the merger and consolidation of the existing Upson County School System and the existing City of Thomaston. Slow go. House Bill 1315 by Representative Burchett of the 176, a bill to be entitled an act to amend an act reconstituting the Board of Education of Atkinson County, approved April 5th, 19. Slow go. That completes the order, Mr. President. Ms. Secretary, can you please read reports of standing committees? Mr. President, the Senate Committee on Education and Youth has had under consideration the following legislation and has instructed me to report the same back to the Senate with the following recommendation. Senate Bill 449, due passed by substitute. Respectfully submitted, Senator Payne of the 54th District Chairman. <laughs> Mr. President, the Senate Committee on Judiciary has had under consideration the following legislation and has instructed me to report the same back to the Senate with the following recommendation. Senate Bill 54, due pass. Senate Bill 340, 395, due pass. Respectfully submitted, Senator Strickland of the 17th District Chairman. Mr. President, the Senate Committee on State and Local Governmental Operations has had under consideration the following legislation and has instructed me to report the same back to the Senate with the following recommendation. Senate Bill 454 do pass, Senate Bill 503 do pass, Senate Bill, House Bill 1264 do pass, House Bill 1286 do pass, House Bill 1287 do pass, House Bill 1206 do pass, House Bill 1246 do pass, House Bill 1209 do pass, House Bill 1203 do pass, House Bill 1208 do pass, House Bill 1190 do pass. House Bill 1239 do pass, House Bill 1242 do pass, House Bill 1243 do pass, House Bill 1284 do pass, House Bill 1226 do pass, House Bill 1227 do pass, Senate Bill 466 do pass, House Bill 604 do pass. Respectfully submitted, Senator Anderson of the 24th District Chairman. That completes the order, Mr. President. Mr. Secretary, will you please read bills and resolutions for the second time? House Bill 826 by Representative Earhart of the 36 and others, Lost Mountain City of Incorporate. House Bill 840 by Representative Carson of the 46 and others, Vinings City of Incorporate. That completes the order, Mr. President. All right, it's now time for our morning roll call. Are there any motions to excuse? The chair's worried he doesn't see the senator from the 33rd. <laughs> You'll excuse him, that's funny. Chair recognizes the majority leader, or the majority whip. Good morning, thank you, Mr. President. I'd like to ask for unanimous consent to excuse the senator from the 49th. Without objection, the senator from the 49th is excused. What per, uh, chair recognizes the senator from the 45th. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, would like to excuse the senator from the 11th. Without we'll objection, do. the senator from the 11th is excused. Are there any additional motions to excuse? Chair recognizes the senator from the 35th. Yes. Yes, uh, by unanimous consent, I'd like to excuse the senator from the 33rd, <clears throat> the 36th, the 34th, she's here, okay, and, and who else? Thank you. Only three senators? Y yes, I don't. Without objection, the senators from the 33rd, 36th, and 34th are excused. The sec chair recognizes the senator from the 44th. Thank you, Mr. President. I ask for unanimous consent to excuse the senator from the 26th. He is in the Capitol doing without, business. 
Without objection, the senator from the 26th is excused. The chair recognizes the senator from the 33rd. Thank you, Mr. President. President, good morning, y'all. I just wanted to let y'all know that I am here today. We were worried about you. <laughs> thank you, thank your, you sir. Your, your friend from the 35th helped you out with, her, with your long list. All right, the uh, secretary will call the roll. Senator, signify your presence by voting the A switch. The secretary will unlock the machine. While we're waiting to do our Pledge of Allegiance, I want to recognize a very special day. I think the senator from the third is celebrating a birthday. Is that right? Is that what I heard? And so, so labeled. Happy birthday, Senator. Thanks for spending it with us. Did that say that's your 21st birthday? Is that what it says? Oh, I thought it said 21st. Easy, Senator, easy. Easy. Take your time. Think about your actions. All right, it's now uh, time for our morning devotional and to ask that everybody take their seats and uh, ask our doorkeepers to secure the chamber. It's my honor to recognize the senator from the 35th to lead us in our Pledge of Allegiance this morning and to introduce to us our chaplain of the day. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Will you all... Join me in uh, pledge allegiance to our flag, American flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now to our state flag.
We want to praise God from whom all blessings flow. And truly, blessings are flowing in this capital today, especially because we have the man of God, the Bishop Aaron B. Lackey Sr., who will be here to call on the Lord and bless us. Bishop Lackey, on March the 2nd, 1985, married his high school sweetheart, Lakita Caldwell. God has blessed them with two beautiful and very talented children, Araline Lackey Wright and Aaron B. Lackey Jr. The bishop has also been blessed with two grandchildren, Xavier and Olivia. And his beautiful wife, the first lady, is here. So please stand. And she is, she's blessing us today, too, because she also is a minister of the gospel. Reverend Bishop Lackey is a servant leader that has given his life to help others. Here's some additional things about him. He's the youngest son of the late James Lackey Sr. and the late Nornell Lackey. He obtained his BA, his MA, and his doctorate, all of biblical studies degrees. And he organ he's the organizing senior pastor at the Temple of Prayer Worship Cathedral, and that's in God's country in Fairburn, Georgia, 35th District. And that's, uh, that was from February of 1988 to present. He is the prelate of the Georgia Northeast Jurisdiction of the United Church of God in Christ from September of 2003 to present. He's the chief apostle and presiding bishop of the United Churches of God in Christ from January of 2009 until now. He's the chief executive officer, Aaron B. Lackey Ministries Incorporated. He's the elite chaplain for Fulton County, Georgia's Sheriff Office from March 2017 until present. Also the public safety chaplain for the city of Fairburn, Georgia from December 2018 to present. He's the vice president of South Fulton Ministerial Alliance, December 20, 2019 until now. Managing partner of Faith Strategies Group, LLC from July 2021, and the list goes on. But his philosophy of servant leadership is evident through his community service and activism. Bishop Lackey, through Aaron B. Lackey Ministries, Inc., and the Temple of Prayer Family Worship Cathedral sponsors an annual Christmas giveaway in Fairburn, Georgia, and through th this effort annually, an established, uh, estimated $100,000 in food, clothes, blankets, toys, and bicycles is given to families that need assistance through the cities of Fairburn, Union City, Palmetto, and South Fulton, Georgia. And I'm just honored that I've had an opportunity, especially uh, during 2020 when the pandemic started, to go and help to uh, give food out from his church with him or to stand with them as they continue to minister to so many through food and clothing. Lackey, uh, Bishop Lackey, and I don't have my glasses on, but I can, <laughs> I know about him. I could probably say this without any paper. But he was named as one of the top 25 extraordinary Atlantans by the Atlanta Business Journal magazine. This powerful man of vision has allowed God to birth within him a message designed to save, heal, equip, and evangelize a lost and dying world. So at every venue, Bishop Aaron B. Lackey Sr. uses his God-given charisma to reach the lost and teach 
the found. He is anointed, appointed, accepted, and approved by God. So without further ado, Bishop Lackey, please come. Thank you so much. Grace and peace be unto each of you. In the name of God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, we certainly honor God for this opportunity to serve as your chaplain today. And I'm very thankful and I'm very appreciative of my wife of almost 37 years being here with me today. And I'm also very honored to have my great niece who wanted to come and support her uncle on this morning. We thank Senator Donzella James, who has been a longtime friend, and I thank you for thinking of us this morning and inviting us here. And I'm also grateful for our Lieutenant Governor, Jeff Duncan, for approving her invitation and allowing me to be able to stand before each of you on today. We extend pastoral greetings from Temple of Prayer Family Worship Cathedral in Fabron, Georgia, and I also bring you salutations from the global membership of the United Churches of God in Christ, where I have been honored to serve as their international presiding bishop. What an honor it is to know so many of you personally. My wife and I have been with some of you during your greatest victories, as well as during some of your most difficult struggles. I'm reminded of a conversation I had with Senator James perhaps two years ago. She had extended this invitation, and then the COVID crisis broke out, and she was afflicted, and many of you were afflicted, and everything got derailed even here in this great August Biden. And I had the conversation with her, praying with her during her time of illness. And she was sharing that many people assume that because you all are senators in the great state of Georgia, that you all experience no pain. They assume that you experience no difficulties. They assume that you all don't ever get sick. They assume that you never have family struggles. They just assume because you hold this great office as a senator that every day is a day of peaches and cream. But how many of us know that that is not reality? In everyone's life, there will be some difficulties. While well, meditating today about what was I going to say, a passage came to my mind from the gospel according to St. John Chapter 10, verse number 10. The word of the Lord says, the thief comes only to steal and to kill and to destroy. But Jesus said, I came that you can have life and have that life more abundantly. And I want to say to those of you, my senators on today, the Lord even wants you to have life more abundantly. Abundant life is not merely measured through materialistic success, but we experience life more abundantly, and I will use the word life as an acrostic or as an acronym. We experience life more abundantly ill when we're able to increase our capacity to love. And I'm sure it is difficult sometimes to increase that capacity to love because nowadays in the political world, everything has become so divisive. Everything is so separated because of partisanship. But I want to challenge you, if you want to really experience life more abundantly, increase your capacity to love. I, I challenge you to invest in yourself. 
and invest in the lives of others. God has given you a unique opportunity to be able to actually make decisions that impact every man, woman, boy, and girl in the state of Georgia. Take advantage of that authority that God has given you and invest in yourselves as well as in others. Make up in your mind that you are going to visit communities that you wouldn't normally visit. You're going to interact with cultures that you normally would not interact with. You're going to try to understand the plight of people that may be different from you, whether the differences are racial, economic, gender, faith, or even sexual orientation, because it is really impossible to be an ambassador for people that you have never interacted with. If I ask you to prioritize your family relationships, your job as a state senator requires long hours, tireless service, and an undue stress is placed on each one of you day in and day out. But prioritize and follow this advice. I teach and I believe and I practice in my own life that God should always be first, but family should be a close second. And then our vocations and all of these other vicissitudes of life, they should be third, fourth, fifth, sixth, etc. But nothing should ever be more important to you than your family except your relationship with God. If, and I emphasize the word if, we are fortunate enough to have a deathbed experience. When our work in this earth has come to an end, chances are, if you're that fortunate to be there on a deathbed, you're not going to be surrounded by the governor. You're not going to be surrounded by the lieutenant governor. You're not going to be surrounded by fellow senators. You're not going to be surrounded by members of the House, but chances are you will be surrounded by your family. And so I encourage you to fortify and strengthen that relationship with family. And then my final point, the letter E, I want to ask each of you a question. Where will you spend eternity? Christ asked us a profound question in the gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 16, verse 26. He says, what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? What can a man or even a woman give in exchange for their soul? So as I close, I want to encourage you to show the world that you have life more abundantly. And the way we do this is when we are not swayed by partisanship, when we are not deterred by classism, by sexism, by racism, or any other isms. We show the world that we have life more abundantly when we are not influenced by the rich and the powerful, when we find ways to offer hope to the least, the less, the lost, and the left out. We show the world that we have life more abundantly when we give assurance and reassurance to the downtrodden. And you, in your powerful offices, you can show the world that you have life more abundantly when you use your authority to legislate and you make sure that you guarantee that every citizen of the state of Georgia will have a fair chance to experience a semblance of life more abundantly. The word of the Lord for the people of God on today. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, we thank you for your grace. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to share a brief word with the members of this august body. Strengthen their families and allow them and allow this time of devotion to be a source 
of inspiration to them, to the members of their staffs, and to all that are assembled, as well as to those that are watching virtually. Father, we ask that during this year's General Assembly, that the spirit of unity and bipartisanship will prevail. We ask that the only agenda under this gold dome this year will be the people's agenda. Let every bill that is generated or passed be done from the viewpoint. Will this give the people of Georgia a modicum of life more abundantly? Continue to bless and to protect our Governor Brian Kemp, our Lieutenant Governor Jeff Duncan, our Speaker of the House, the Honorable David Ralston, every Senator, every Representative, and everyone under the sound of my voice. We ask these things today in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Let everyone say amen. amen. Thank you so much for this opportunity.
If the Senate will come back to order. Senate, come back to order. Are there any unanimous consents? Does any senator wish to rise on a point of personal order? Senator from the 34th. Good morning, good morning, good morning. I have some good news for you this morning. In this month of black history, I have living history right here in our chamber so that we can understand that women, black women, not just Rosa Parks, not just the Underground Railroad, all of these trailblazers, we got them here today right here in this chamber. Let me start by letting you know who I'm talking about. Renee Montgomery. You heard the name? Well, let me just say this. She's a retired WNBA player, 11-year career, two championships. That was in 2015 and 2017. Currently part owner one of three owners of the FCF. Okay, what's FCF? I was going to tell them, but thank you. <laughs> now y'all see who Renee Montgomery is. <laughs> um, she in, it was an investor, or is an investor in the Atlanta Dream. The Atlanta Dream basketball team, just for you all that don't keep up. Studio analyst for broadcast of Atlanta Hawks games. And in January, she launched her podcast, Montgomery and Company, first female team owner. Won't you give a round of applause for Renee Montgomery? Stand up, raise your hand, Renee. Let them know who you are. I want her to know that in addition to a resolution, I'm going to ask the reader of the Senate to read for you. We're going to present that to her. As well as the Secretary of State wanted to acknowledge her and her accomplishments. So I am trying to make sure she knows that she is loved by this Senate. And if the reader would read, please. Ask the secretary to read a uh, resolution. Senate Resolution 13EX, recognizing and commending Renee Montgomery and for their purposes, whereas Renee Montgomery is a former American basketball player who serves with distinction as, she's, as a sports analyst for NBA and ESPN, celebrity host to numerous media outlets, and part owner and vice president of the WNBA Atlanta Dream. And whereas during her 11-year career playing in the Women's National Basketball Association, Renee won two championships with the Minnesota Lynx. Now, therefore, be it resolved at the Senate that the members of this body recommend Renee Montgomery for her contributions to the sport of basketball and extend their most sincere best wishes for her continued health and happiness. That concludes the order, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you all for listening, and thank you again for taking time out of your busy schedule to come down and bless us with your presence. I yield the will. Is there objection to the adoption of the resolution? Hearing none, the resolution is passed. Hey, y'all need to act right today because I got some of my people down here. They're up there in the, in the gallery. I'd like to, uh, to welcome the Carroll County Chamber of Commerce up here on, the, on their field trip to come see what y'all do. So I tell them how studious you are. Come on, help me out here today. Hey, stand up, Carol. Let, let me say hey to you.
Senator from the 28th is recognized. Somehow I knew you were going to call me next after you made that comment, so um, I will try to behave for our people of Carroll County. Um, but I, I do want to touch on something. We had a, a bill that was first read this morning, and um, it's, a, it's an issue that we're facing across this state uh, and really across the country. And, and you know, I, I got a text message this morning from a dear friend that I grew up with, and she, she lives up in Atlanta. And, uh, actually married a, a, an Atlanta native, and they, they live where he grew up, and, and their kids are in the Atlanta public schools. And she sent me this text, and I want to read it to you. Uh, she says, APS District's COVID protocols have caused students to feel isolated and angry. There is a major increase in emotional and behavioral issues across the district that they are ignoring. Just this morning, our kids heard of a shooting threat at their middle school. This is what isolation and anger causes. Our school is the best in the district and never had issues before. Again, the mass mandates on top of basically a year of virtual have done so much damage. Please rally for this legislation. Please support. APS is out of control and needs to be stopped. It's 100% political for them. This is our only hope. And for me, I don't, I don't really have a dog in this fight. I, all my counties are, have been back in school, were very limited in their virtual learning, and, um, and haven't been requiring any kind of mask mandates. And to my knowledge, there haven't been any major issues. And as we heard the preacher earlier today, he talked about, let's take politics out of the equation on our decisions. And this, is, this should not be a political decision when we're, when we're looking at legislation like this. So I just ask you all to, to open your hearts and minds as this legislation moves through and, and think about these children, think about these parents, think about the isolation, and think about the, the long-term damage that we are causing. So with that, I yield the well. The Senator from the 21st is recognized for a point of personal privilege. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I rise today before you to talk a little bit about something I put on your desk, sports betting. I want to thank this Senate, and I especially want to thank the Senator from the 53rd for last year passing a constitutional amendment and a bill that we have sent to the House. Um, in this, uh, what I put on your desk, New York passed legalized sports betting, and in the first two weeks, they did $611 million in sports betting. In two weeks, they're projected to do $1.2 billion in a month. Um, I hope everybody enjoyed the Super Bowl. It was a great game, and I want to congratulate Matt Stafford, quarterback from Georgia, for winning his first Super Bowl. But did you see that $46 billion was wagered on Super Bowl 56 here in the United States? $56 billion, not million, billion. Um, and I would just say this. Um, we are kidding ourselves if we don't think people in the state of Georgia are betting on sports. The franchises want it. The sports leagues want it. I think it's time for us to pass this and put it on the ballot and let the citizens of Georgia decide if they want sports betting. Mr. President, I yield the well. Thank you. The senator from the fourth is recognized for a point of personal privilege. Thank you, sir. I, I want to recognize a gentleman that I knew very well. Um, he was a doctor in state for Black History Month. Uh, he also was a client of our firm for many, many years, uh, Dr. Uh, Thurman Clemens. But he was the second American, second African American doctor to serve the residents of Bullock County. And he was born, born in 1936 and passed away in 2012. Born in Catula, Georgia, and I didn't know where Catula is, but that's in Harris County, and many of y'all know where Harris County is. Dr. Clemens was an honor graduate of Tuskegee Institute. According to his doctor, Dr. Clemens, he was likely inspired to pursue a medical degree by the experience for caring for his elderly parents and his interest in aptitude and chemistry. In 1966, Dr. Clemens received his MD 
for Meharry Medical College, the first medical school in the South for African American uh, people. He started his medical career in Statesboro as the medical director for Georgia Grace Memorial Nursing Home in 1971 and continued to practice there after his um, finishing up as a medical director. He generously served as a donor, mentor, and role model for many community causes, especially those focused on youth. Dr. Clemens would eventually become the first African American physician to serve on the staff of Book Memorial Hospital in an important step away from the long history of segregated health care. What I remember about Dr. Clemens most of all was when our first son was born, and, uh, Rusty, Dr. Clemens sat in the waiting room with me for probably an hour or so before Joanne got me to come in there with, with the delivery. But uh, very special person, great American. Thank you, sir. I yield the well. The senator from the 14th is recognized for a point of personal privilege. Thank you, Mr. President. Now, we have the opportunity to have visitors come and see us every day. And today, in caucus and then out here in the hall, I have the privilege of having a gentleman named Tom Jones with us. It's a unique name, but what's even more unique is we talk about tax credits and we talk about individuals. I've even seen stickers that said, do not California, Georgia. See, Tom Jones moved here from California. He moved here a little over a year, about a year and a half ago. And Tom will tell you he didn't move here quick enough. He said one of the first things he did, change his license plates. He's like many people. They come to Georgia and they understand how great it is. But let's go just a step deeper. It's his profession that's interesting. You see, Tom Jones is an animator. Every one of you at some point have seen his work. Batman, Superman, Scooby-Doo, and hundreds and hundreds of other films. He also set up an international music academy where some of the top talent in the world come through his music academy. See, Tom could just retire to California. He could retire anywhere in the world. But instead, he moved to Georgia and brought his wife here because he got sick and tired of the politics of California. And he came here not to take advantage of tax credits, not to take advantage of Georgia, but to take advantage of the thing he will tell you, the relationships of people. And I'll close with this, Mr. President. On his way down this morning, he had an accident. He admits it's his fault. He bumped into somebody in front, and she bumped into somebody in front of him. And he said, I was almost petrified, because in California, they would immediately say, I'm suing you. He said, instead, they got out and said, hey, I'm okay if you're okay, and maybe we'll just swap numbers. And, and he said, that is so refreshing, and it's what makes Georgia special, is the people. So, Tom, if you can hear me, welcome to Georgia. Grow as much as you can with the business that you're doing in the films. And I want you to know, we're glad you came. And with that, I yield the well. The senator from the 25th is recognized for a point of personal privilege. Thank you, Mr. President. I rise, ladies and gentlemen, I rise today uh, with a heavy heart, uh, but I wanted to be able to recognize a very special family and also recognize a very special community. Uh, as many of you in this room know, uh, over the weekend I had a, a close personal friend uh, who had a tragic, tragic, tragical accident occur in, uh, in his family uh, on Friday morning their house burned in Cartersville, Georgia, uh, the Phillips family. And they, they're you know, three beautiful children who were inside the home, 14, 12, and 10. The 10-year-old was unable uh, to get out of the home. And uh, to say that uh, the, the Phillips family is uh, friends of mine is probably not a strong enough word. Uh, this is uh, Corey and I were lived together in college. Um, uh, hung out together, were in each other's weddings, were at each uh, child's, uh, the birth of each child, we uh, vacationed together. So they're a very, very dear and close family friend. And, uh, you know, I, when I got the call on Friday morning, uh, it was about 5 a.m., it was from Corey to let me know that something had happened at their home. 
and he needed some some wanted to see if I'd run up there and check on what was going on of course I immediately did um, and um, but it was one of those things where your emotions just melted way away you know you didn't really feel anything that was going on politics didn't matter business didn't matter what was going on in your life didn't matter and I can only imagine what uh, this family is going through but I also want to have this, take this opportunity to recognize uh, the people of Bartow County and Cartersville. When I got on the scene Friday morning, uh, the uh, fire chief, uh, Scott Carter, uh, and the whole Cartersville Fire Department uh, really need to be recognized for what a professional job they did, uh, of how uh, pr private they were with uh, their their you know actions and 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 handling the situation and and I just really want to commend them for their professionalism and how they were attent and to um, the situation that was at hand and the size of the situation as well uh, and and the community there uh, really has um, even though I don't live in the 14th district there in Bartow County in Cartersville you could feel the love of that entire community and it was really something that was special and the the outpouring of of uh, love is, is continuing on and um, and I just want to uh, thank the people in that community I want to thank uh, the our, our first responders in that community uh, because they have really done an exemplary job in, in handling this situation and mr. president if it's all right with you I would like to uh, take this moment and lift this family up in a moment of silence because and this community up in a moment of silence because what they're going through is something that uh, you don't want to you don't wish it on your on your worst enemy and um, and uh, they need our prayers they need um, you know our our uh, you know they need our our encouragement and uh, and I just like to ask this body to uh, take a moment and, and lift him up in prayer. The senator has asked for us to join with him in a moment of silence. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. The senator recognizes, or the chair recognizes the senator from the 26th for a point of personal privilege. You knew that was going to happen at least once while I was up here. Thank you, Mr. President. The uh, senator talked about sports betting. Ladies and gentlemen of the Senate, we have an opportunity to do something. And that something is to provide health care in rural communities. COVID-19 gave some money to those rural hospitals. We only have a few left. But what I'm suggesting is that on parimutuel wagering, I've been to Vegas, I go to Weetopka, and I go to Cherokee, North Carolina. And when I drive in the parking lot, the only thing I see is Georgia Tech. So what we need to do with that power of mutual is to make sure that our citizens in rural Georgia have health care. And what I'm going to propose in the power of mutual wagering and the sports betting that 30% of that money goes to provide health care for rural communities. We're not in the Stone Age, and our citizens deserve health care. I've had my problems, health problems, but I'm only 15 minutes from in the hospital in Macon, Georgia. But when you get to rural Georgia and something happens, they are piling in the cars, running down the highways, flying, and might have an accident and kill everybody in the car trying to get a loved one 
to get some help. And it's about time. If you're going to do something, let's make it work for the citizens of Georgia. Health care is a number one priority in rural communities. They deserve it. They live in those communities. They live where they want to stay. But they ought not to be punished because they stay in rural Georgia and can't get the proper health care. So if we're going to do it, we need to make sure that the citizens of Georgia are provided those opportunities that most of us have who live in the metropolitan area. Thank you, Mr. President. I recognize the senator for the 37th and appoint him personal privilege. Thank you, Mr. President, members of the Senate. The book of Ecclesiastes in the Bible, chapter 3, verse 1 says, To everything there is a season, a time for every purpose under heaven. After that, it goes on and lists a series of beginnings and ends. The first one is the time to be born and the time to die, which encompasses the life of individuals. After that, it talks about... In, individual segments of people's lives. But it always, the, the crux of it is, is there's a time of beginning, there's a time of end. I rise this morning to tell you that I will not qualify to run for re-election this fall. I want to tell you that if this has been one of the most wonderful experiences that I've had in my life, and I value the privilege of serving with each of you uh, but the time's come, I believe, and and I have prayed through this for a long time to not run for re-election. And I've got peace about it. I didn't think I was going to run in 2020, but I did. could not get peace about not running. But I've got peace about it now. I think the time <clears throat> has come to do this. Am I going to miss it? Absolutely. Am I, am I not going to miss parts of it? Absolutely. And all y'all know what those parts are, because all of us have been there together. I want to say thank you to a lot of people, but I'm not going to call your name individually. First and foremost, I want to thank my wife and my children and my grandchildren, because they have been the ones that, by and large, have borne the brunt of me serving here because I was gone all the time. My wife and son is, are in the back corner. I want, to make, I want y'all to make them welcome this morning. They have been. They have filled in for me when I was not there and supported me in all of my ventures. Nathan was, has been my chief advocate and sign installer in the 37th district. If you saw those pretty white signs that were plumb and true, it's because Nathan put them in the ground. He didn't just throw them in the ground. He put them in there with a level the way it ought to be put in. And at the end of the campaign, they were as straight as they were the day he put them out. Because there's a right way and there's a wrong way to do things. And I'm proud that my, all of my children know right and wrong. So I want to first and foremost thank my family I want to thank each of you for the friendship. And when I say each of you, I mean Democrats and Republicans. So many times today we're divided by partisan issues. So many times today we focus on things that aren't really important. But I cherish the times that we've been able to sit down and talk about issues that we obviously have differences of opinion. Both, I've had that with both Republicans and Democrats, but I pr appreciate the honest and open conversations that we've had. 
I appreciate the fun times we've shared. I appreciate the, the, the friendships that we've built. And I appreciate the hard work that we have done together for the state of Georgia. When I served on Cobb School Board, there was one lady, we had seven members. One was a Democrat, and I'm gonna call her name because she's special. I talked to her last night, told her I was not gonna run for re-election. Um, and we, we talked about our time together for 12 years. The amazing thing about it, she was the only Democrat on that board, and she was probably one of the closest allies I had on that board because you always knew where Miss Betty Gray stood. And if she told you she was with you, you didn't have to look around behind to make sure she was still there. But the amazing thing, and what we remembered both last night was the fact that we had an agreement right to start with when, when I came on the board. We were going to be friends. We sat down and talked about a lot of issues. And it didn't, we didn't always get up from the table agreeing. But one thing we agreed on is that when we got up from the table, we were still going to be friends. That's important, and I think we can all learn from that. I'm not going to call anybody's name in here that was special, because I'd be, there would be a long list, and I'd surely forget one person that I meant to mention. But I'm going to mention two people that are no longer with us that, that are special. The first was Mr. Jack Hill, and I say Mr. Jack Hill because he'll always be Mr. Jack. As chairman of appropriations, he taught all of us a lot of things. His countenance and his demeanor was superlative. Jack was always welcoming. He had a great sense of humor. He had a keen mind. He'd do what was right, but he also knew how to negotiate for the good of the state of Georgia. And it's that give and take that it takes to come to productive endings. And Jack left a legacy that all of us should aspire to. The second one I want to remember is Senator Ross Tollison. Now, Ross Tollison was a lot of fun, and Ross Tollison worked hard, but we all remember him for his trademark motto, tighten up. And we can learn from that in that it doesn't matter how long we've been here, it doesn't matter how smart we are, it doesn't matter how hard we work, we can always do it a little bit better. And we need to work just as hard today as we work on crossover day and we work the last two, three days of the session. What we do every day matters to the, to the people in the state of Georgia. I would, have pre pre I would have preferred to wait till the end of this session to announce, but I think that my, the people in the 37th district need notice and we don't need to wait till the last minute to determine who's gonna fill that seat because Leadership is important. Having the right people in place are important. People who are reasonable, who listen, who work hard, who come down here realizing they don't have all the answers. So I wanted to give, I wanted to give proper notice. Uh, I'm gonna miss a lot about this place. There's a lot about this place I'm not gonna miss. I told somebody this morning, I wouldn't take anything for being here, but I'm not sure I'd pay a whole lot at this point in my life to stay. <laughs> There's no, there's no question in my mind I'm in the fourth quarter. I just don't know how many minutes are on the clock and I want to spend most of it with the folks that I love. Uh, Y'all that know me know that since I've been here, <clears throat> my major focus here has been in education. I pay attention to education because that has more effect on our future than any other topic that we deal with in this body. Pay attention to the kids. Don't get diverted on the adult issues. When you think about the wrangling that we have over education, most of the time it's about adults and money and how it affects them. Look at the education of the kids. My good friend Betty Gray always said one of the fallacies of education as we know it today is the fact that there's too many people making education decisions that it's been way too long since they looked in the eyes of a kid. I'll say this, we need to remember, we've been through some tough times since COVID struck almost two years ago. I don't think we're, we lack a day being there to be two years. In the education world, it's my opinion that even though it's been two years, our students have lost probably a year's worth of education. 
the thing we have to do is come to realize that that is a reality. And if you'll think about building a house, education's almost like a footing and a foundation on a house. Everything that comes after primary grades is a superstructure that goes up. And what has happened and what the situation we find ourselves in is, I mean, a lot of people now, when they build houses and do foundation walls, they pour concrete walls. But when they were building blocks because of the interruptions that we've had in the process of education, it's almost like on every layer of block, every time you went along, we skipped either the third or fourth block because of the interruptions. But the risk that we have is, is the wall continue to be built with those skips in it. And every year that goes by is another layer that's built on top and we've had two years where there's a skip in every third or fourth block. And we know that fundamentally, that wall and that structure will fail if those voids aren't filled. We have got to be sure that we fill those voids of the lost learning because the process has gone on. We have children who have not mastered the second, third, fourth, and fifth grade that have been promoted to the third, fourth, fifth, and sixth grade and on up. But that's foundational and it's necessary. I'll leave you with this thought. Whatever you do, take care of the kids in the education state of Georgia because our life and livelihood as a state depends on their education. It's been a pleasure serving with you. I appreciate uh, the fact they didn't call time on me this morning. But uh, I've also got a bill today, Senate Bill 438. It's a great bill. Time. Y'all need to vote for it. Thank you very much, Mr. President. When I was a uh, brand new senator here uh, over in CLOB, the senator is one of the first ones who um, invited me to his office every afternoon after we were done to coach, teach, and mentor. So he created the senator that you have before you, so it's his fault. <laughs> senator, you'll be missed. I recognize the senator for the 24th to uh, announce the doctor of the day. There you are. Thank you, Mr. Clean. I mean, Mr. President. Y'all didn't get that, did you? Anyway, I'm here to, to announce the doctor today, today, Dr. Nick Capitito. Under, he did his undergraduate degree in University of Georgia, medical degree, Medical College of Georgia in Augusta, orthopedic surgery residency in University of Missouri, shoulder and elbow fellowship in uh, Brown University, and he currently practices shoulder and elbow specialist in Augusta and Macon. Dr. Nick has been a great man, been of medical field, and we're glad to have him today as a doctor today. Thank you. You have a consent cal calendar of privileged resolutions before you. Does any senator wish to remove a resolution from the consent calendar? Hearing none, is there objection to the adoption of the resolutions on the consent calendar? The chair hears none, and the resolutions on the consent calendar are adopted. Are there any motions to withdraw and commit? You have a consent calendar of local bills before you. Mr. Sec Secretary, are there any objections filed to any bill on the local consent calendar?
Mr. President, there is an objection filed by Senator Lucas of the 25th, Senator Butler of the 55th, and Orock of the 33rd to Senate Bill 454. That bill will be moved to the contested calendar. Is there objection to agreeing to the report of the Committee on State and Local Governmental Operations, which is favorable to the passage of the bills on the local consent calendar? The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. The question is on the passage of the bills on the local consent calendar. All those in favor will vote yea, opposed nay. The secretary will unlock the machine. On the passage of the bills on the local consent calendar, the yeas are 49 and the nays are zero. And the bills having received the requisite constitutional majority are therefore passed. I recognize the senator from the 51st for a motion. Thank you, Mr. President. You like that, Mr. President. I ask for unanimous consent. Yes, I've gotten bills. used to it. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. I ask for unanimous consent that the bills that were just passed on the local consent calendar be immediately transmitted to the House. Is there objection to the motion? Hearing none, the bills immediately transmitted to the House. The Secretary will read the heading of Senate Bill 454. Upon that, each side, for and against, will have 10 minutes. Mr. Secretary, read the bill. Senate Bill 454 by Senators Kennedy of the 18th and others, a bill to be entitled an act to amend an act establishing the Board of Public Education for Bibb County, approved August 23rd, 1872, as amended, so as to change the description of the education districts and for their purposes. Mr. President, the Senate Committee on State and Local Governmental Operations recommends that this bill do pass. Respectfully submitted, Senator Anderson of the 24th District Chairman. That completes the order, Mr. President. I recognize the senator for the 18th to speak to Senate Bill 454. Thank you, Mr. President. Good morning, colleagues. Uh, Senate Bill 454 is one of our local redistricting bills. It is for the Bibb County Board of Education or the Macon Bibb County Board of Education. Um, the, the only issue of controversy regarding this bill involves a late, a very late, not even formal objection, as I understand it, with regard to what the Bibb County Board of Education has communicated to us. Let me go back in time and explain just a little bit about what we have. The Bibb County Board of Education, as I am told, got together drew with the assistance of Gina Wright and our redistricting office the map that they wanted. They met about it. 
I was informed that they had voted it, sent it our way. After the bill came up, then there was a communication to me indirectly that they wanted to perhaps tweak one of the one of the six or eight districts, only one, by a very small amount. That set off a chain of communications that I had with both uh, the attorney for the superintendent, uh, excuse me, the attorney for the Bibb County Board of Education and others. My good friend, the senator from the 26th, have had communications about this. And the last information that I received was that the Bibb County Board of Education was going to meet on Tuesday I received this information last week. They were going to meet on Tuesday today to gather and vote on perhaps a substitute map that would have some changes to it. Now, I said to them the exact same thing that any of one in this chamber would say, which is, wait a minute, that's too late based on the deadline that the Secretary of State put on us of February the 18th. There's no way to file a bill then. So if you go back and look, when the bill's filed, I think it was filed maybe 10 days or so ago, not even last week, but the week before last is when the bill was filed so that it would get through the process and we would be in a position to have timely redistricting. The senator from the 26th and I have had these discussions. I think he's going to tell you the same thing, that in fact he was informed by the Board of Education <clears throat> that they want, they're having a meeting sometime today, and if they vote on a map that they would like to have, which presumably would have one very minor change to only one district, they will send it up to us, but everybody in this chamber knows that there's no way to timely pass that bill and get it out. Um, so we need to move on Senate Bill 454, which is, to my understanding, has a substantial support of the Board of Education. Uh, and by the way, in case you're wondering if this has my color marks on it and crayon marks, it does not. I didn't even see the bill. This is the bill that the members of the Board of Education in Bibb County said that they wanted and sent it my way. And it's the only one that's been communicated as having the approval or review or approval to some degree from the members of that board. So with that, I'll ask you to vote for Senate Bill 454. I'm happy to answer any questions. You have no questions. Okay. Thank you, Mr. President. I yield the well. I recognize the senator from the 26th to speak to Senate Bill 454. Thank you, Mr. President. This is one thing I hate to do. Get y'all involved in a local fight. The reason I object is the board is supposed to meet tonight and decide on a plan. They've had two work sessions. They have not voted on a plan. So I don't know where the agreement comes from. It looked like to me it's premature. They're supposed to vote on a plan tonight. And my understanding that they're going to vote on plan two. Well, plan two is over in the reapportionment office because they drew it. I said the bill can be amended by substituting the other plan that the board supposedly is going to pass tonight. Listen, local fights will get you in holy W-H-E-L-L. It's what it'll do. But I'm objecting because 30 minutes ago I was on the phone with the superintendent and he said, David, we have not adopted any plan at a board meeting. We are meeting tonight. We had discussions on the plan, and when we got the first plan, there was some discussion about it, and somebody had a problem with it. And so, presumably, they will vote tonight on the second plan. I said, the bill's been introduced. It's a local bill. Y'all don't know nothing about the lines and stuff down in Macon, Georgia. But we, the two of us, would know. And so I'm asking y'all 
to vote against 454. Let the local board make the decision. Now, if they want plan one, then fine. But that is not what I was told. And that is the reason I refused to sign it. We keep talking about local control. Let's let the folks that serve in these positions give us a plan that they can agree on. So I don't know where the misinformation came from, but it ain't right. Whatever they told the senator from the 18th. Because I specifically talked to the superintendent, and he said, we've had two work sessions, and we're going to vote tonight. And so I would ask you to vote down 454, and if we get a plan, we can amend 454, just substitute it. We do that all the time. We substitute bills for other bills all the time. Reapportionment is no different. So I ask you to vote against 454. You have no questions. Does any other senator wish to speak for or against the measure? The chair hears none. The senator from the 18th, you would close out the, the debate. Thank you, Mr. President. I'll be very brief. The problem is the reason they're calling this other plan that they may vote on tonight or may not vote on tonight plan two, and the reason the senator from the 26th refers to it as plan two is because you have to have a plan one before you can have a plan two. And the plan one is what you have before you, which is Senate Bill 454. I didn't dream this up. Nobody else dreamed this up. And as I told you a minute ago, and the senator didn't dispute it, I had nothing to do with the drawing of the plan that is before us. It came from the people of the Bibb County Board of Education. So this is not an issue about local control. This is not an issue, and I know and I appreciate the senator, that he didn't accuse me of having any improper hand in this. But we're if we're going to talk about it, we're going to describe it, we need to describe it fairly. The plan two that he wants to wait on follows what? Plan one, which is what we have. And regardless whether they vote on it tonight or not, we still have a timing problem. So we're supposed to find out sometime after we close business today on Tuesday the 15th and submit a plan Wednesday or Thursday that somehow has got to be out of this chamber to the House, back and on the governor's desk by Friday the 18th by the deadline. Folks, we can't do that. And that's not my fault, and it's not the senator from the 26th fault either. This is the bill that's before us. This is the one we need to vote on. This is the one that they wanted, and it's the only one that we can get through timely so we can do redistricting properly and appropriately and timely for the Bibb County Board of Education. Thank you. I yield the well. Is there objection to agreeing to the report of the committee which is favorable to the passage of the bill? The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Is there objection to the main question being ordered? The chair hears none and the main question is ordered. The question is on the passage of the bill. All those in favor will vote yay, opposed nay. The secretary will unlock the machine.
On the passage of the bill, the yeas are 31 and the nays are 22. This bill, having received the requisite constitutional majority, is therefore passed. Recognize the majority whip. Thank you, Mr. President. I ask for unanimous consent to transmit Senate Bill 454 immediately to the House. Any object? The senator from the 26th has objected. Does the senator have a parliamentary inquiry? Parliamentary inquiry. State your inquiry. Mr. President, I'd like to serve notice that we, recon that we reconsider Senate Bill 454. What is the, the action that you're requesting here, Senator? I'm asking, I'm serving notice that I would ask the Senate uh, to vote to uh, Reconsider? I reconsider okay. of passing a 454. Okay, the senators moved, or you serve notice of the uh, move to reconsider. That bill will. Since the Senator of the 26th has served notice that the motion will be reconsidered, that, that bill will be read before the reading of the journal on Thursday morning. I recognize the senator from the 53rd. Thank you, Mr. President. You sure are good looking back there. Just want to point that out. Uh, I have a group in the balcony today. It is the FFA uh, from Walker County. I hope they're still there. Stand up. Be recognized. Let me stand up. There we go. There we go. That's our future farmers of America. Oh, okay. Thank you so much for being here from Walker County. That's the Chattanooga Valley Middle School, um, uh, Richmond, uh, Rossville Middle School, Lafayette Middle School, and uh, here, wait, wait, wait. Give it to me. Saddle Ridge, thank you for being here. We're now moving on to the rules calendar. Secretary will read the caption for Senate Bill 461. Senate Bill 461 by Senator Dixon of the 45th and others, a bill to be entitled an act to amend code section 1761 of the OCGA relating to when offenses available, procedure, schedule of bails, and appeal of bonds, so as to add the offense of human trafficking as available offense and for other purposes. 
Mr. President, the Senate Committee on Public Safety recommends that this bill do pass. Respectfully submitted, Senator Al Albers of the 56th District Chairman. That completes the order, Mr. President. I recognize the Senator from the 45th to speak to Senate Bill 461. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Senate colleagues, today I bring a bill before you that I'm carrying on behalf of the Governor and First Lady, Senate Bill 461, building on the initiative that the First Lady and the Grace Commission have championed in the fight against human trafficking. This bill simply brings the serious offense of human trafficking onto the list of offenses only bailable by a superior court judge. Human trafficking is a serious offense that must be treated as seriously as other crimes that violate moral turpitude. Lower judges like magistrate judges are often unelected and may not even be attorneys. Superior court judges are attorneys that are elected to office ensuring that they will always be held accountable by the electors of that circuit. Judges in Superior Court are more likely to look at the facts and the case of their entirety before setting bail. With that, Mr. President, uh, if I have no questions, I will yield well. I see no questions. Thank you, Mr. President. Does any senator wish to speak for or against the measure? The chair hears none. Is there objection to the agreeing of the report of the committee which is favorable to the passage of the bill? The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Is there objection to the main question being ordered? The chair hears none and the main question is ordered. The question is on the passage of the bill. All those in favor will vote yay, opposed nay. The secretary will unlock the machine. On the passage of the bill, the yeas are 54 and the nays are zero. The bill having received the requisite constitutional majority is therefore passed. The secretary will read the caption for Senate Resolution 345. Senate Resolution 345, a resolution by Senator Hatchet of the 50th. A resolution supporting in the renaming of the Short Line Trail to the Bill and Dusty McKay Trail and further purposes. Mr. President, the Senate Committee on Natural Resources and the Environment recommends that this bill do pass. Respectfully submitted, Senator <coughs> Harper of the 7th District Chairman. That completes the order, Mr. President. I recognize the Senator from the 50th to District to speak to Senate Resolution 345. Thank you, Mr. President. I rise today to bring Senate Resolution 345, which would uh, rename the Short Line Trail, which is a hiking trail in Clayton, Georgia, uh, after Bill and Dusty McKay, who have been volunteers on the trails for decades. They're uh, in their 90s now, well-deserving recognition for all the years they've put into making uh, the world a little bit better place. And so I'd greatly appreciate your support uh, on this resolution. If there are no questions, I'll yield the will. You have no questions. Thank you, Mr. President. Does any senator wish to speak for or against the measure? The chair hears none. 
They were real quick on the flip that time. Hearing none, we, we're going to vote on Senate Resolution 3, 4, 5. Is there objection to agreeing the report of the committee which is favorable to the adoption of the resolution? The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Is there objection to the main question being ordered? The chair hears none and the main question is ordered. The question is on the adoption of the resolution. All those in favor of the resolution will vote yay, oppose nay. The secretary will unlock the machine. On the adoption of the resolution, the yeas are 52 and the nays are zero. The resolution having received the requisite constitutional majority is therefore adopted. Mr. Secretary, if you could introduce the Senate Bill 374. Read the caption. Senate Bill 374, a bill by Senator Tillery of the 19th and others, a bill to be entitled an act to amend Part 3 of Article 4 of Chapter 12 of Title 45 of the OCGA relating to the Georgia Data Analytics Center so as to provide for definitions to establish the Georgia Data Analytics Center as an agent of all executive state agencies and for other purposes. Mr. President, the Senate Committee on Science and Technology recommends that this bill do pass. Respectfully submitted, Senator Dolezal of the 27th District Chairman. That completes the order, Mr. President. I recognize the senator from the 19th district to speak to Senate Bill 374. Thank you, Mr. President. Senate Bill 374 allows agencies to talk to each other even when federal law sometimes dictates that certain information remain in a single agency by taking the uh, Georgia Data Analytics Center and implanting it in each agency individually. It's a really simple concept, helps us uh, save state, pa state taxpayer money uh, by not uh, duplicating certain tests, et cetera, that have already been done. Thank you, Mr. President. If there are no questions, I'll yield the well. You have multiple questions, Senator. Just don't press your button again while I'm up here, okay? You can yield the well. Does any other senator wish to speak for or against the measure? The chair hears none. The is there objection to agreeing to the report of the committee which is favorable to the passage of the bill? The chair hears none and the report of the committee is agreed to. Is there objection to the main question being ordered? The chair hears none and the main question is ordered. The question is on the passage of the bill. All those in favor will vote yay, opposed nay. The secretary will unlock the machine.
On the passage of the bill, the yeas are 53 and the nays are zero. The bill's having received the requisite constitutional majority is therefore passed. Secretary will read the caption for Senate Bill 403. Senate Bill 403, a bill by Senators Watson of the First and others, a bill to be entitled an act to amend Title 37 of the OCGA relating to mental health so as to enact the Georgia Behavioral Health and Peace Officer Co-Responder Act and further purposes. Mr. President, the Senate Committee on Health and Human Services recommend that this bill do pass by substitute. Respectfully submitted, Senator Watson of the First District Chairman. Mr. President, the Senate on Health and Human Services recommends the following substitute to Senate Bill 403, a bill to be entitled an act to amend Title 37 of the OCGA relating to mental health so as to enact the Georgia Behavioral Health and Peace Officer Co-Responder Act to provide for immunity for the transport of a patient to a facility and further purposes. That completes the order, Mr. President. I recognize the Senator for the First District to speak to Senate Bill 403. Mr. President, uh, I move that the Senate table SB 403. The Senator from the First has moved to table Senate Bill 403. Is there objection? Hearing none, Senate Bill 403 is tabled. Mr. Secretary, please read the caption to Senate Bill 438. Senate Bill 438, a bill by Senator Tippins of the 37th and others, a bill to be entitled an act to amend Article 2 of Chapter 10 of Title 13 of the OCGA relating to retention of contractual payments and creation of escrow payments on contracts for installation, improvement, maintenance, or repair of water or sewer facilities, so as to change certain provisions relating to retainage of progress payments and further purposes. Mr. President, the Senate Committee on Regulated Industries and Utilities recommends that this bill do pass. Respectfully submitted, Senator Kauser of the 46th District Chairman. That completes the order, Mr. President. I recognize the uh, Senator for the 37th District to speak to Senate Bill 438. Thank you, Mr. President. Members of the Senate, I bring you Senate Bill 438. This bill, this bill deals with public procurement and the retainages held on contractors on public works. This is, encompasses all public works projects that are of the construction nature. This request was brought to me by the Associated Building Contractors and the Associated General Contractors of Georgia. This bill makes one very simple change. Current law provides that in construction contracts that are governmental or issued by the government, a 10% retained retainage of the contractor's earnings are held through the midpoint of the job, which, which is 5% of the total job value. This bill collects 5% retainage throughout the life of the job. All this does, it, the owners retain the same amount of money but it frees up more working capital at the front end of a job that, um, that's very much needed because most construction projects are very expensive to get started because uh, the mobilization piece and also the, all the materials that you buy. It's a very simple bill. It's, uh, the owners are protected and I ask your passage of it. If there's no questions, Mr. President, I yield the will. You have no questions. Does any other senator wish to speak for or against the bill? Chair hears none. Is there objection to the agreeing of the report of the committee which is favorable to the passage of the bill? The chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Is there objection to the main question being ordered? The chair hears none and the main question is ordered. The question is on the passage of the bill. All those in favor of the bill will vote yay, opposed nay. The secretary will unlock the machine. <laughs>
On the passage of the bill, the yeas are 52 and the nays are zero. This bill, having received the requisite constitutional majority, is therefore passed. Will the secretary read the caption of Senate Bill 445? For what purpose is the senator from the 53rd rise? Parliamentary inquiry. State your inquiry. Mr. President, you know what a man of rules I am. And going to the rule book, I think we violated a rule that's very important here. Would you please have Secretary of Senate read uh, Rule 1-4.6, subsection D? Senator, you will. I, I think you shorten your title because every time I've seen a man of rules, it's the chair of the powerful rules committee. I, that's your official full title I've well, seen in the paper. The last that, would, that would be arrogant of me to say that. No, so it thank be. you for pointing that out to me. You are very powerful. Subsection D. Can you read the requested? Subsection, yeah. Say uh, the rule, uh, but, rule number again, please. All right. Uh, Mr. President, I made the whole thing up just to get your attention and to say those kind of words, so I pull back my objection. Thank you, Senator. Uh, we are all concerned about moral turpitude, and as you know, moral turpitude is defined as something you wouldn't want your mama, wouldn't want your mama to see you do. So thank you for bringing that up to us today on that important occasion. Mr. Secretary, we'll read the caption of Senate Bill 445. Senate Bill 445, a bill by Senator Burns of the 23rd and others, a bill to be entitled an act to amend code section 282143 of the OCGA relating to civil and criminal penalty for violation of section 610 of the National Manufactured Housing Construction and Safety Standards Acts of 1974 and regulations and final orders issued thereunder and for other purposes. Mr. President, the Senate Committee on Agriculture and Consumer Affairs recommends that this bill do pass. Respectfully submitted, Senator Walker of the 20th District Chairman. That completes the order, Mr. President. I recognize the Senator for the 23rd District to speak to Senate Bill 445. Thank you, Mr. President. I'll be brief. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, this is a bill that aligns Georgia Code with the national HUD requirements for manufactured housing. Uh, it is the request of the officer Office of the Insurance Commission, the Fire Marshal's Office. I've discussed it with the Georgia Manufacturing and Housing Association, and they have no objections. Are there any questions? There are no questions. I'll yield away. You have no questions. Does any other senator wish to speak for or against the measure? Hearing none. If there are objection to the agreeing of the report of the committee, which is favorable to the passage of the bill, the chair hears none. The report of the committee is agreed to. Is there objection to the main question being ordered? The chair hears none and the main question is ordered. The question is on the passage of the bill. All those in favor of the bill vote yay, opposed nay. Secretary will unlock the machine. On the passage of the bill, the yeas are 53 and the nays are zero. This bill, having received the requisite constitutional majority, is therefore passed. The secretary will read a local message from the House.
Senate Bill 13, House Bill 1300 by Representative Holmes of the 129th. A bill to be entitled an act to amend an act to create the Jasper County Water and Sewer Authority approved April 16th, 1999, so as to revise the membership of the authority to provide for related matters, to repeal conflicting laws and further purposes. That completes the order, Mr. President. The bill is referred to SLOGO. I recognize the Senator from the 37th. Senator, Senator, I'm sorry, I messed you up on that. Motion from your desk, please. A motion from your desk, please. That was on me. Thank you, Mr. President. I ask unanimous consent to suspend the rules to allow House Bill 1028 and House Bill 1154 to be withdrawn from SLOGO and committed to SLOGO General. The secretary will read the captions. House Bill 1028, a bill by Senators Jordan of the Six and others, a bill to be entitled an act to amend an act providing for the election of members of the Board of Education of Cobb County and for other purposes. House Bill 1154 by Senators Jordan of the Six and others, a bill to be entitled an act to amend an act creating the Board of Commissioners of Cobb County and for the purposes. That completes the order, Mr. President. The Senator has asked for unanimous consent. Is there objection to the, to the motion? Hearing none, motion has. Senator, at this point, you make the motion to withdraw or commit. Senator from 37. I move we withdraw and commit. The Senator has moved that we withdraw House Bill 1154 and 1028 from SLOGO Local and to SLOGO General. Is there objection? There is objection. The motion on the floor was to move House Bill 1154 and House Bill 1028 from SLOGO Local to SLOGO General. There was objection on the floor. Each side will have three minutes. I recognize the Senator for the 37th to speak to the motion.
Thank you very much, Mr. President. Uh, I ask you to uh, recommit or to commit these bills, to withdraw and commit these bills to Slogo General. That's where they were supposed to have been routed originally, and I'd ask you for your favorable consent to do that. Thank you, sir. I yield the will. I recognize the Senator of the Six for three minutes. Thank you, Mr. President. With respect to that, actually, no, they were supposed to go <laughs> to Slogo Local because they are local bills, right? Local bills. These are Cobb County bills that the local delegation is supposed to actually be dealing with as opposed to pulling them off. And why do we pull them off? Because we know that we don't have the support of the local elected officials. Again, Gwinnett, Augusta, Cobb. I absolutely object and specifically with Cobb County, this is headed straight to litigation. They literally have drawn a sitting county commissioner out of her district, a woman of color. It's just not acceptable, y'all. I object and I yield the well. All those in favor of the, the motion to commit will vote yay, opposed nay. The secretary will unlock the machine. Recognize the Senator for 21st. On the motion, the yeas are 31 and the nays are 21. The motion has prevailed and is committed to the committee that on Slogo General. Senator from 21st. Mr. President, I ask to unanimous consent to suspend the rules to withdraw Stop. commit. Wait, we got to finish this one first. I thought okay. you had a question. All right. Chair recognizes the Senator for 29th. Mr. President, I ask for unanimous consent to suspend the rules to allow SB 522 to be first read and referred to committee. Secretary, read the caption. Senate Bill 522 by Senator Robertson of the 29th, a bill to be entitled an act to amend an act reconstituting the Board of Education of Harris County approved January 15, 1993 as amended so as to change the description of the education districts to provide for definitions and inclusions and for other purposes. I can please order them, Mr. President. Mr. President, the Senator from the 29th has asked for unanimous consent to suspend the rules to allow first read and refer. Is there objection? Hearing none. Secretary, read the caption. Senate Bill 
Senate Bill 522, a bill by Senator Robertson on the 29th, a bill to be entitled an act to amend an act reconstituting the Board of Education of Harris County, approved January 15, 1993, is amended so as to change the description of the education districts, provide for definitions and inclusions, and for other purposes. That completes the order, Mr. President. Bill is referred to slow go. I recognize the majority whip. Thank you, Mr. President. The moment we've, we've been waiting on. I move that the Senate stand adjourned until 10 a.m. on Thursday, February 17th. Secretary will read the announcements. The Rules Committee will meet upon adjournment today and um, 4.50 of Capitol. The Higher Education Committee will meet in 4.50 at 1 p.m. today. The Insurance and Labor Committee is canceled. The Public Safety Committee will meet in MES 1 at 2 p.m. today. The Regulated Industries and Utilities Committee will meet in 4.50 at 3 p.m. today. The Judiciary Committee will meet in 307 of the CLOB at 4 p.m. today. And Appropriations Transportation Subcommittee will meet in 4.50 at 5 p.m. today. That completes the order, Mr. President. Are there additional announcements? I recognize the Senator from the 19th. Thank you, Mr. President. If, if, if I could, at the end of session, if I could get the subcommittee chairs of appropriation to please just meet me over here at the uh, left of the dais. Thank you. I recognize the senator from the 40th. Thank you, Mr. President. Women in the chamber, uh, don't forget the Women's Caucus meeting now. Go pick up your lunch in room 216 and then go back and zoom in for a presentation on workplace harassment. Thank you, Mr. President. Recognize the senator from the 47th. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the things that, that we get to do is honor some of the people, great folks that we have in Georgia by d dedication of intersections, roadways, and that kind of stuff. If you've got a roadway or intersection that you want to name, if you would, uh, please get with me and, and uh, my assistant. We want to make sure that we get that properly done for you. Thank you. The majority whip has moved that the Senate stand adjourned until Thursday, February 17, 2022 at 10 a.m. All those in favor of the motion say aye. Opposed, no. I was weak. The ayes clearly have it and the Senate is adjourned.